Hello guys, so this is November 23, paper 2, question 4, and this question will mainly be about radioactive decay and one equation relating to it. So, we are given this uh, reaction, and in the first part of the question we need to identify X, so we technically need to determine its nucleon and proton number, so if we have X, it's, a, it's of some form A, B, where A is the nucleon number. So what this means is just the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Those two are the nucleons in the atom. And B is just the proton number. So how many protons we have in this atom. And well, for a reaction like this to happen, these have to be conserved. So on the left side and on the right side, we must have the same number of protons and neutrons, or at least the same amount of nucleons and the same amount of protons. So if we see here, we can see that we have nine protons on the left, and fluorine already has nine protons. So X must have zero protons for that, for that equation to satisfy. And... If we look at the nucleon numbers, we have 19 up here and we have 18 here. So we need another one. We need another nucleon for X so that the reaction is correct. So this will be the, this will be X and this is what is called a neutron. So it has a one neutron and zero protons. As again, this is the nucleon number. So in total, it has one neutron and proton. But from the lower number, we see that it has no proton. So it must be a neutron. And then the second part wants us to explain why the proton must be traveling at a high speed for this process to occur. Well, first of all, it's important to notice that for, this, for these types of reactions, we need the nuclear force. We need the strong nuclear force. Nuclear force. And it's important that this force has a very short range. So for this force to kind of like work, it has to be really close. The atoms have to be really close to each other. So that means if we have like the nucleus here and we have some proton traveling this way it has to be really close to the to the nucleus for this reaction to happen as it's this reaction happens by the strong nuclear force but if it has to be really close so it has to be close but if it's really close then they're here like over here, there's going to be electrical potential energy simply because they're both charged. Because the, nu the nucleus also has positively charged protons. And this is also a positively charged proton. So these will repel each other. Repel each other. And we know that we can calculate the potential energy. We don't need to, but we see that the electrical potential energy is just K big Q over small Q divided by R. So we see that if we have a small radius, then we have a large potential energy. So if we have a, so for the proton to come really close, it must have a large potential energy when it reaches the nucleus. And well, how can it have such high potential energy? Well, it has to have a very high speed at the beginning. So here it has to has a high, has, will have high kinetic energy. Because as it travels closer and closer, the repulsion will get larger and larger. Its speed will decrease. So it will lose its kinetic energy and it will all be converted into potential energy at the moment it stops right next to the nucleus. So it has to have large kinetic energy. At the beginning so all of this can be converted into potential energy and well large kinetic energy we know that this is one half mv squared 
so it must have a high speed for it to have a high kinetic energy the mass of the proton we can't really change so we must shoot it at a very high very large initial speed so it can come close enough so that is why it must travel at a high speed and then part b is like a simple calculation we need to do if we look in the data booklet then uh, we will see that there's this equation that relates the activity after some time t where is this is like the activity now so like activity after some time this is the initial activity e is just Euler's number and uh, this lambda is called the decay constant this is also given to us in the question and well t is just the time so we need to apply this formula and we need to find the time taken for the activity to decrease from 1.5 giga becquerel to 1.2 mega becquerel so i probably would recommend to first solve for t and then plug in the values or you can use n solve on your calculator if you want but if we rearrange we will just find e minus lambda over t then we can take the natural log of both sides to get rid of the power in the e then we will find that this is equal to we can use the log properties that this will just be minus lambda t as if we take the natural log of this expression we can take out the power to the front and so this will just be minus lambda t times the natural log of e which is just one so we're left with minus lambda over lambda times t so we can just now divide by minus lambda so that we find that the time is going to be the natural log of a over a zero over lambda minus lambda and now we need to plug all of this in so I'll move that there and then it's just important as the last step to uh, mind the units as we see that at the start we have giga becquerel and at the end we have only mega becquerel so there's also not only from 1.5 to 1.2 but there's also a factor of 10 in there or like a factor of a thousand so we want a becquerel of 1.2 times 10 to the 6 and initially we had 1.5 times 10 to the 9 becquerel so i just converted both of them to becquerel so we can do the division because obviously if we want to divide the two then they must have the same units and then this is just 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 per seconds so this will give us 6.5 times 10 to the 4 seconds and if you would want you can convert this to hours which would approximately be 18 hours so that's how much time it will take for the activity to decrease and then that's, this was about it the next parts of the question were all part of the old syllabus we don't need to know this anymore it's not taught in ib anymore from the 2025 exams so this was about it and see you in the next one